hello welcome back in the last video we saw a preview of load runner controller and we realized what load runner controller can do for us in this video let's try to see a, a use case of load runner controller say for example uh, you know you want to simulate say 40 users and let's say the users you know what the users number one is going to do it is going to going to do some activity that is similar to browse lesson so that means it's going to log into the module system and go to a random course and then go to a random um, book and then browse uh, to topics of that books okay and that we have already we have already have a script for that and that script is called browse lesson right so that means user number one is going to run this script called browse lesson okay then we have similarly you know user number 10 and similarly we have user number 40 so there are 40 users they are going to all going to going to run this script called browse lessons and also it's given that they're going to do something like this and if you plot the users and time so this is a timeline and we have this is the a number of users all the users are going to start at same time that means at time t is equal to 0 my number of users are 40 and then they will run for let's say one hour okay so this is one hour and then all those users going to stop immediately okay so this is the scenario that you want to simulate you want to simulate 40 users running browse lesson for one hour right and how do you do that so this is where your controller is going to help you and I'm going to st I'm, I'm starting I'm in process of starting my load runner controller so this is this is where your this is where load runner controller is going to help and let me demo you how to uh, run that scenario let's go to file and create new and it will new scenarios uh, window is going to come and here click on manual scenario and then you browse the script okay so let's go to the script and this is my scripts are here and I'm going to run browse lesson v2 so I say open and say okay okay so now this browse lesson script by default it's saying that run 10 users but I need to make it 40 users and also instead of having this kind of you know you know ramping up pattern I'm going to start all those 40 users at time t is equal to 0 to do that you choose a schedule that is called basic schedule okay so basically here like you know if you see the like you know the scenario schedule using this option using the options available here in this you know you know scenario schedule panel i can essentially configure everything okay and i'm going to show you in you know next couple of videos how to use this scenario schedule pane to simulate real time scenarios all right and and the moment i choose basic schedule look that there are you know the the, the number of actions has been reduced instead of real world self schedule you have more actions in basic schedule we have less actions so let's see you know how to how to uh, achieve our objective our objective is to run initialize all those 40 users simultaneously so which is like you know which is already like you know, if you go if you go here and then double click here then you are saying that okay initialize for users before it runs okay and then what i'm going to all view users simultaneously so this is what i'm going to check and then okay so all these 40 users initializing simultaneously then i'm going to start views also simultaneously so that means the init section will run simultaneously and after that after the init it's going to start we're going to start simultaneously then i go to the run and in run i'm going to give it run for one hours okay and then after that i stop all those views simultaneously so essentially with this scenario okay i'm ready to go and just want to change instead of 10 i want to i want to run 40 users okay and let's save this scenario and let's say give the scenario a name and this is our basic scenario okay save and now if you run the script okay so it's going to start everything in it all those 40 users have been now being initialized so they're, they're all running now the view user init method and in view user init method we are essentially logging the users in and once all those 40 users going to initialize then they are going to go to a state called ready okay at this time you know there are all those and then now they are ready and then now all of them are running 
so all these users are running 40 users and they will run for one hour okay and then once they run for one hour they will go to the past state or fail state if some users fail okay or you know or error or whatever so we will just explain you this thing in more detail in the next videos but this is how you can create a basic scenario notice that i'm going to i'm already seeing some error so if i click on this this pen i'm going to see the you know what is the error message the error message is that that the cpu utilization of my load generator and right now the the one that is actually running the load is my local host and there the cpu has exceeded to 80 percentage so that is why it's giving me an error all right however still the things are running fine is not an issues okay so so this is how you create this so this is how you simulate this uh, scenario so what are the so basically now what i'm doing i just you know instead of running this thing let me uh, basically stop okay so that stop and let's now discuss a little bit more about what things really you know what are the disadvantage of this uh, of, of this method so the first disadvantage is that we are not really doing a real life scenario so what do we mean by real life scenario assume that a, a, a office space like for example not let's say let's say let's say let's say office is employing 2000 employees so do you think that all these 2000 employees coming at right at 8 a.m. and get inside the building this may not be true right so instead like the users that all these 2000 users they might come between say 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. okay so that means if I draw a timeline here this is time and this is the number of users so instead of basically abruptly coming everybody coming at um, you know 2000 and making a stampede what they do they may probably come you know like you know, maybe at this time maybe five users will come at this time maybe 20 users will come and and if you see the count the number of users they may be by 9 a.m by 9 a.m all those users are in the building then they work for some time right and then let's say they go for lunch and again no not that everybody goes lunch at the same 12 a.m rather they go again at a particular time so essentially what you do this is kind of a a huge case where the, the users log in during some time and then they work for some time and then they log out so similarly in the in the application that we are testing which is for a you know for a student you know accessing e-learning content they also follow probably the same pattern that means not that at you know morning 6 a.m all of them are logged into the system they log into system you know basically depending on you know at particular time so essentially what we what we simulate here in this basic scenario may not be true in most of the cases but however I'm not saying that in some cases if you want to do a stress testing and so on it makes sense to see if you know whatever if, if 2000 users come in then can I handle it gracefully or there will be a stampede going to happen the stampede equivalent thing in the server is, is the server might crash okay to do the stress kind of scenario we probably do this scenario but however in most of the load testing or performance testing we might go to some kind of scenario like this a real life scenario so this is the disadvantage of the basic scenario in the next video i'm going to discuss about real life real workload scenario thank you